And who am I? That's not a secret I'll never tell. You know you love me. XOXO. Gossip Girl. What's up? We got Gossip Girl Season 2, Episode 9, There Might Be Blood. This episode starts off at the loft with Jay and Agnes preparing for a time sensitive event. Jay works at producing many dresses as she can, and Agnes works at organizing things as fast as she can. Agnes reminds Compton that they'll be successful and that they'll be lucky that they're lucky Nate and Dan went to the movies. Jay admits that, that Nate's avoiding her and says that he hasn't spoken to her since they kissed. Agnes encourages her to make the first move and they prepare for the upcoming fashion show. Meanwhile, Dan speaks of his suspicions of Jay's newfound appreciation for privacy to Nate, who doesn't say much in return. As they walk, Dan te gets a text from Jordan, the girl Nate met at Yale, who... He... He needs... He reads it out loud and learns that she had three professors read Dan's story and will call him later. Dan begins to panic, thinking it's bad news, then decides to go home and wait for her to call. Elsewhere, Serena and Blair meet with a prominent Yale donor named Elizabeth Boardman in an attempt to get a bid for Blair's acceptance. However, Liz is, is, in, is not interested in Blair and more interested in Serena and her story. She excuses herself to get say goodbye to her husband while she's distracted. Serena helps Blair to stop cracking her knuckle and tries to to be friendly. Can, continue to be friendly. Elizabeth turns and she says she explains she had to leave to meet with her friend at Barn Mayor. Br Bryn Mayor. Don't know what that means, but but only after she was room service for her daughter Emma. Serena suggests that Blair take Emma to a movie, and Blair, Emma, and Elizabeth likes the idea. She calls Emma into the room and introduces them to, introduces them to, introduces her to Serena and Blair. Serena then leaves and runs into Aaron outside the hotel they were at. He explains that they were meeting outside, and that he's meeting with a collector, and she figures about C C Cecile, says. Cecile and who he was. She mentions that she saw him leave with another girl and he replies that that girl was just a friend in the middle of inviting him to come to the charity gala she's going to. Another girl runs up and kisses Aaron while he apologized for being late. Upon seeing this, Serena just decides that she doesn't want anything to do with it and walks away. Decides yeah, it'd be better if he doesn't come and walks away. At the loft, Dan and Nate arrive home to find Jane and Agnes on the way out. Shocked to see him, Jay asks what they're doing back. Back at the loft, Emma Emma emerges from her room all dressed in a skimpy dress and explains her situation to Blair. A school at her a girl at school a girl at school, her Muffy has plans to lose her virginity to her class captain, who is dubbed the the D Virgin the D Virginator. But Emma wants to take her night right away from her parents, wants to take her night away from her parents to do it first. But Blair's starting to tell her mom on her, and Emma says unless Blair helps her, she'll tell Dean Barabee that Blair took her to a club and got her wasted. Back at back at the loft, Jane tells Dan that she quit Eleanor's and she and Agnes were putting on a, fashion, a gorilla fashion show. She begs Dan not saying anything until she has her fashion show to show everyone she could do, promises, and then promises to tell Rufus everything. Dan replies that he needs a minute to think and goes to her room. After the end of the woods, Blair brings Emma over and explain, explains the situation to Serena. She says that Blair will bring her to Cherry Gala and then apologize, saying she didn't know how lame it would be, taking her home at the end of the night. Emma comes into the room and, at that moment and announces that she wants to go what bar she wants to go to. Blair asks her to come to the gal with her and lose her virginity when members of the elite. Serena backs her up and out first to let Emma pour a dress from her closet. At the, at, at the gallery, Vanessa tell, tells Dan that he that he should cover for Jane since she puts so much into work to the show. Dan mentions how she hasn't come to the loft since Nate moved in and asks if she still has feelings for him. She says that Nate hates her and that they tried to have a relationship and that didn't work out. Dan voices the concern that Jane might about might be at, might about to make a life altering decision mistake. Life altering mistake 
and Rufus overhears and asks well, who is about to make a life altering mistake. Back at the Vander Woodsons, Chuck introduces himself to Emma. She mentions how she's going to the gala, and Chuck replies that he's so, the only thing he likes that is aged is his scotch. Emma realizes that Blair lied to her and asks Chuck to take her for a ride in his limo. He asks about where to give Serena a box that was left at the concierge and decides to go with Emma. And Serena is room, but it tells Serena that she's trying to delay leaving so they can waste as much as even as possible. She excuses herself to go to check on Emma while Serena's brought the box. She's, she opens it to find Aaron. To find Aaron's so locator string inside. She's pleased to see it. However, her happiness is short lived as Blair tells her that Emma's gone. Back at the loft, Nate tells Jane to wait for Dan. She says that this is her only chance to prove herself before asking why he, since he cares since he hasn't spoken to her all week. Nate again begs to tell Nate again begs her not to do, not to do it, and she replies to, by telling him to come with her if he really cares about her. He thinks it's over and then offers to drive. They all get into a van waiting downstairs and drive off just as Rufus and Vanessa walk up to the building. Meanwhile, Chuck and Limo, Emma attempts to seduce him. Like, this girl's a teenager, and this dude's like, what, eight, Chuck's like, what, 18? That's gross. Meanwhile, Vanessa and Blair Serena desperately try to locate Chuck. However, he answers the apartment that Emma and explains how she assaulted him, and that's when he chose not to deflower her. She bolted him, she, and then she bolts from the car. Serena then says that Isabel has, is, has tracked her, has texted her from Eve Boardman using her credit card at One Oak. Remembering Emma stole her mother's credit card, Blair sets off with Serena and Chuck to find her. Meanwhile, Nate, Jane, and Agnes arrive at the Palace Hotel, where, where, the, where the New York's Philanthropic Society is hosting the annual charity. Nate confusing asks why are they there and Nate Jane explains that she's financial help with beginning her line and the best place to to be exposed to donors is as a bank. Nate is impressed how much she's playing, how much planning she's done and offers to help him help him to offers him a suit for him to wear. She asks him to stay and then runs outside at one out. Serena Blair Chuck Right. Chuck goes to talk to the bartender while Blair starts for crap for Emma. They spot her in the corner with a guy named Sergey. Emma remains confident that she'll accomplish her goal. Serena is then approached by a guy who knows her, and Emma uses this as a distraction to bolt with Sergey. Back, back at the gala, Jane answers to find the, find the evening is Hope is honoring Bart and Lily. She then is approached by a member of the security who asked for her name. She lies and says her name is Erica Vanderwoodson. And her parents are are the guests of honor. The man accepts this and walks away. Jane spots her in a moment and comes over. Jane congratulates her and Lily asks what she's doing here. Nate walks up and says that he brought Jenny as a seed since his mom couldn't make it. Well, he asks if they've seen Serena, and Nate says no. They excuse themselves to go get a drink. Jane admits that she was about to ruin the night of, that she's about to ruin the night of people who've only been nice to her. Nate reminds her that she doesn't have to go through with her plan, but she remains insistent that she has to. She takes the opportunity to kiss. She takes out to kiss her, and a girl takes a photo of the kiss because again, these random passer buyers. Unknowns to them, a random girl takes a picture of them kissing. Again, they they these 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 random people these random people have nothing to do better with their time than take pictures of two random people making out and sending it to Gossip Girl. After the kiss, he tells her whatever she decides, he'll support her. Back at One Oak, Blair tells her, 
Blair tells Serena that she lost Emma outside, then blames Serena for ruining her chances of getting the yell. Serena retorts that she wouldn't have had another chance if it hadn't been for her. And it been for her. And before the argument, Cass quickly Chuck announces the bartender saw the credit card user is in the, his back booth. The three look in the back booth, see it. Emma's mom making kissing guy who isn't her husband. Blair takes a photo and thanks God for giving her such an opportunity. <laughs> that was great. Back at back at the gala, Jenny brings the USB drive containing the video. It's played. Agnes. That to be played. Agnes leaves, check on the model, and leaves Jenny and Stewart and employee of the hotel to complete the finishing touch it. At the at the law, Rufus tells Dan that he should have come sooner. Dan checks Goss Girl and sees the photo of Nate and Jenny kissing. He says he knows where they are and they all leave to get them. They get into a car and Rufus is dissatisfied with how slow they're traveling. Jenny tries to defend Nate and Dan, of course, angry that Nate kissed his sister, shuts her down. Shuts her down, but doesn't say why. Saying they are at the gala, but get held up at security. However, Lily sees them tell security they can come in. Dan goes to look for Nate. Jen, Vanessa goes to look for Jane, and Ru Lily asks Rufus if Jane's okay since she saw her earlier. They then are interrupted by Bart, who asks what's going on. Back at One Oak, Blair is no longer interested in finding Emma now that she has a golden ticket. Serena tells her not to because literally, Serena tells her not to you don't use that photo as a way to get into Yale, and. But of course, Blair doesn't listen because it's Blair. And Chuck comes up to say he found Sergey's address and that they should they should go. So gets a text from Lily saying that she's late for the gala and that tells Blair that to do what she wants to do but consider saving Emma first. Blair agrees to save Emma first and asks Chuck to see if he has any idea. He replies he does have one. At the gala, Nick, Dan finds Nate and shoves him against the wall and to confront him for kissing Jenny. Nate reasons that he didn't plan anything and that he's not a creepy guy. Dan reminds him that yeah, Nate was trading sex from tra trading sex for money. Nate apologizes for not saying anything but about Jenny, but he says Dan has no right to judge Jenny. Dan orders Nate to get out and pack. Nate, no, Nate orders Dan. Dan orders Nate to pack up his stuff and get out of Dan's apartment. Immediately. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Blair and Chuck arrive at Sergey's. Oh, I meant to say, Dan orders Dan orders Nate to get out of their apartment. So Humphrey's lost immediately. I, Dan, I said Dan's apartment, but it's not technically Dan's. But still, back back at back at the bar, Blair and Chuck arrive at Sergey's apartment, but Emma refuses to let them in until they do it. Chuck tells Blair to tell Emma to check Gossip Girl, which she does. Emma is horrified to learn that not only did Muffy lose her virginity, not only did her mom lose her virginity, Muffy lose her virginity, but that Gossip Girl reported it. She throws down her phone, opens the door, and throws the door open, and Blair and Chuck escort her out and leave together. In the cab, Serena calls Aaron to get his voicemail. On the message, he, he, he apologizes for Serena since that girl from earlier isn't his girlfriend or anything. He begins to leave a message but gets interrupted by a girl picking up, asking if, Aaron, if she's calling for Aaron. Flustered, Serena scrambles for words but ends up hanging out. Back at the gala, Jenny runs in Nate who tells her about how Dan and Rufus know everything. Agnes comes out and encourages Jenny to go through with the show since Rufus can't punish her twice. She agrees and asks Nate to stay in at least until their presentation is over. In the main room, the 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 head of the New York Philonics picks the Philonia the Phil, the Philonia picks society begins his honor speech, but it's cut off when the lights turn off and music starts to play. Then video begins to play on all the screens, introducing J, J. Humphrey design. As the video plays, Jay and her models and more. Model friends emerge wearing Jane's dresses. They begin climbing tables and breaking glasses while throwing Paul Roy with their cell phone numbers on it. Most everyone, including Lily, is delighted with the show, and several people begin pocketing the Paul Roy. If they without turn out, Jane runs over to Nate and kisses him, which Vanessa witnesses. Vanessa walks out, and Jane realizes Vanessa saw them. <clears throat> she goes. She goes after her, but is unable to catch her. Immediately afterwards, Agnes and her friends are escorted from the hotel, and Rufus and Dan follow them outside looking for Jane. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Blair and Chuck deliver Emma to the hotel. She is upstairs with, while Blair thanks Chuck for Jane Gossip Girl to post that fake blast on Muffy. 
<clears throat> he then follows Emma into the, the hotel room and stops her. She tells, she tells her the first time she'd be with someone she actually loved, and she knows that this was really about getting her mom's attention. Emma admits that she's right and that she's sad because her mom never keeps her promises to do mother-daughter things with her while they're in the city. Boris suggests that that tell her mom how she feel and that she should stay away from Sergei's stay away from the Sergei Sergei's of the world. Emma tearfully agrees and thanks for for saving her. Meanwhile, Dan gets a call from Jordan, who tells him that she wasn't able to get a lawyer recommendation. He thanks her for trying and hangs up. <clears throat> Serena stops him and asks if he's okay. She tells him that to, she tells him not to worry about Jenny and that he should admit that Jenny that Jenny puts everyone in her life on the line to pursue her with passion. He's worried that she got all the courage in the family, and Serena asks where is that coming from, and he apologizes for spoiling her night. Serena encourages him to talk to Jenny, and he admits that he isn't going to get into Yale or any good writing program. He thanks her for listening and goes to find worth it. Upstairs, Boy brings Emma to her room and finds her mom waiting for them. Emma tries to explain that it's not Boy's fault, but Emma orders, but, but her mom orders Emma to go to bed. When Emma leaves the room, her mom accuses accuses Blair of trying to get Emma wasted in exchange for police accuses her of, of accuses Blair of trying to get Emma wasted in exchange for playing Blair's case as Dean. She finishes by saying that Blair that Blair isn't Neil material. Offended offended, our best Blair is is about to confront her about her affair when Emma comes back in order in order to back in in order to rescue Blair. Emma again her mom again or Emma's mom again orders her to go to bed before commenting that it's no surprise that she doesn't want to spend time with her. Emma hurt does as she's told. I've seen this, but decides not to confront Emma and instead tell her to pay more attention to her daughter. Outside, Jenny tries to look for the nest, but runs into Rufus instead. He tells her that he hopes she's proud of herself. She said she is, since she accomplished what she wanted. She continues that she has 32 missed calls on her phone for prospective backers. Rufus replies that he's never been more disappointed in her. Rufus. Mm. Lily, Lily, Lily comes over and Rufus tells Jenny how he owes Lily an apology. She apologizes to Lily, who assures her who who assures her to Kane she liked the show. Seeing Rufus' reaction, Lily steps aside and tells Jane she won't get away. Lily steps aside as, as Rufus tells Jane she won't get with what she did. Jane says it's too late to do anything and Rufus sees police officers and, tell, and tells them to arrest Jenny as she's the one responsible. The officer says they're going to take her to the station where they'll call her parents. She responds that Rufus is her parent and Lily jumps in saying that she was the guest of honor and that Bart owns the hotel and they want to Bart owns the penthouse or the hotel and they won't be pressing charges. The cops then leave. Rufus tells Lily that it's not her business. This is not for business. She then answers that she's stopping him from making a horrible mistake. Jen says they should figure it out because she's going home. Next day, Chuck goes to Nate's house and sees how he's been living. He must say he didn't know how bad it was. Nate replies that he's going to stay with his mom for a while. Chuck offers him to stay with him, but Nate declines. Back at the Lander Woods, and Serena tries to get Blair out of bed after a night. She encourages her to try for another school because, besides Yale, but Blair doesn't want to hear it. However, her her phone begins to ring, and Blair starts to find Serena starts to find Dean Barry on the earth. And she gives the phone to Blair, and when the housekeeper comes in, tell her she has a visitor. When when she gets to front room, front room, she finds Aaron waiting for her. He invites her to go out with him, and she makes a crack about how all the girls in his life. She tells him that she isn't interested in being with someone, someone with a posse. And he tries to explain, however. However, she stops up asks if she feels something or she doesn't she? Or doesn't. She feels something or she doesn't. And then he hasn't been able to stop thinking about her since they got reacquainted. She changes his mind and invites her to dinner. Then she and asks if she ate the ring. She says no and he replies that that's, that it's nine years old. She, ref she realizes that he kept the ring the whole time and then he walked. And she walks out, realizing that he'll that he'll see her that night. 
Square come, comes in and excitedly tells Serena that Emma told Dean Barabee that she's the one person she would like most to have dinner with. And he said that Yale could use a girl like could use a girl like Blair Waldorf because could use a girl like Blair Waldorf. At the loft, Dan comes out of the room to find Rufus waiting for him. Alone, Rufus says Jenny left at about six at the mor left about six that morning. Dan says that he was up late writing in a story about Chuck from Noah Shapiro. Rufus says that he tried to he tried to say that he doesn't think that's a good idea, but Dan argues saying that morning argues that morning after Jenny stunt isn't it good time for him to encourage him to do things the right way? Rufus replies that success goes away and that if you don't like who you are who you become, after it's over you have nothing left. Dan Flat replies that if he's willing to take that risk, he should look in Jenny's room. He does to find that yeah, Jenny's move yeah, Jenny secretly moved out without any of them knowing. He opens the door to see that yeah, Jenny moved everything out of her room and secretly moved out of the, the loft without any of them knowing. After the Android Sony and Blair look over the Yale Court catalog together. On his way out of town, Nate stops at a mailbox and mails a letter to Jenny. Elsewhere, Dan mails his letter to Noah Shapiro. Meanwhile, Jenny walks on a random street with several suitcases, clearly homeless. So, yeah, that was episode ten, 9 of Gossip Girl. That was episode 9 of Gossip Girl Season 2. Wow. I liked it. I liked it. I like it. I liked it. But still. So we had Jen. So we had. So we had De Nate being kicked out by Dan for kissing Jenny. Jen Jenny moving out of the Humphrey loft because of what Rufus did. Because of her actions. And, or because of Rufus tried to arrest her, I guess. And three. And three. But Lily actually coming up to Jenny's defense. And Nate. Nate. <clears throat> Nate. Nate mailing a letter to Jenny and not knowing that she moved out and five and five that Emma gave this is not the last time we'll see Emma as she later appears at the end of the season but still it's not the last time we see Emma as she appears at the end of the season trying to become the new queen of Constance, I don't know why, but five, but still five she was able to give Blair that job for her job to go to Yale. Yeah, we see Emma again trying to replace Blair as the Queen of Constance after everyone graduates, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that episode at the end of the season. But still, just saying, this this is not the last time we see of Emma Boardman. But yeah, but yeah, that's it for this video, and I'll see you. And too bad we had no love icon Dorota. Okay, we have no love icon Dorota this episode. Sadly, we had no icon Dorota scene. Why show? Why? You know that Icon Dorota is the best part not the best part, but still Icon Dorota is the Icon Dorota is the best character in the show. But still. Anyway, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time for episode ten of Gossip Girl Bonfire of Vanities. So yeah. But you know you love me. XXO Gossip Girl.